We're sisters, best friends, and authors on a mission to help you stoke your creative fire and live the life of your dreams. We believe that purpose fuels passion and that creativity is your secret weapon for mass construction. There's never been a better time to bless the world with your dream realized. You're listening to The Kate and Abby Show. Hello, guys. What's up? Welcome to another episode of The Kate and Abby Show. This is episode 23. We're thrilled to have you here. It's a crisp, chilly day here, and we're, yeah, super ready to dive into today's topics, which is actually inspired by a recent message that we got on another episode from a viewer who was kind of asking about like what to do when you're discouraged in your own writing because of what other people are saying, or maybe if you're, this was a student talking about other students at school, making fun of their writing, putting down their writing, making it so that they were so discouraged that they were like deleting their stories or not writing their stories anymore. So me and Abby were talking about this message particularly And to not only that student, but everyone in this situation of whether you're a student or you're not a student, what do you do when you sometimes feel like you're the only one who believes in your own writing? You're passionate about your writing, but maybe there's someone in your life putting it down or making you feel like you shouldn't be chasing your dream of being a writer or you should just give up on your story. What do you do with that and how do you move forward? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Pretty heavy stuff. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Pretty, um, I think it's very important to everything you do. But mm-hmm. um, when you're creative, you're already doing something that a lot of people don't do. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're pursuing an art, especially writing, because I feel like writing is definitely not... Um, It's not something that people think of immediately when they think of like, oh, this will be a great thing to make a career at, you Mm -hmm. know. I I wrote a blog post a long, long time ago that was, um, I think it was called, oh, what was it called? It was like, it had a really funny title. It was like, um, uh, you're ruining your life or something. You're throwing away your life and other, (laughs) and 10 other things that people say about artists or something like that. (laughs) They'll tell you you're throwing away your life and, and you know, you're not going to make money doing that. But even if it's not a money thing, even if it's not a career thing, I feel like a lot of artists have to kind of deal with these these uh, comments from people that are right. not always going to be encouraging. Yeah. Let's put it like that. Exactly. N- non-encouraging yeah. comments. You will get a lot of encouraging people throughout your life, especially if you stick it out and you find your people. Mm-hmm. But you're also going to encounter some not encouraging people who are just kind of, I think the the thing that we have to first address before we get into like anything is everybody who says anything about anything that you're doing is speaking from their own perspective and speaking right. from their own reality. So it really has nothing to do with you. What yes. they say about you has nothing to do with you. It, it has, it's completely to do with them and how they feel about themselves in their life. Four Agreements moment right there. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Four Agreements is a great book. Great book in the section where he talks about don't take anything personally because if someone says something to you or lashes out at you or makes a comment about you or has a certain stance toward you, it's not about you. It's about their own experience, their own lens through which they're viewing it. Mm-hmm. So you see that with like someone gets angry at you in traffic for no reason. That's not because of you. It's because of what's been happening to them for who knows, maybe the past 10 years of their life. Yeah. So you can't look at that and be like, oh, see, yeah, I'm a bad person. Right. No. So yeah. if someone makes a, a comment about your writing, oh, you're really not a writer, uh, you're <laughs> you're throwing your life away. That's they're coming at they're coming at to this topic. They're coming to the table with their own experience, yeah. not with necessarily a non-biased, uh, helpful point of view. Right. Also, the words that they tend to use are usually reflective of how they feel about their own lives Mm -hmm. and themselves. So somebody who says, you're going to throw away your life by doing that, they probably 
most likely they feel like they've thrown away their life some way or another with what they've chosen to do. So those things don't just like pop into somebody's head as like that's a that's a perfect accurate right. assumption of what you were or doing. Or they might have it's, tried like an uh, 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 some kind of creative thing before yeah. and it didn't work out. So yeah. now they're like burnt and they're right. like, ah, that's and not going to work. And you can really only speak from a place of like your own perspective. So yeah. if you're speaking from your own perspective and your own feelings on something, you're going to, you're, you tend to assign your own feelings about something to someone else's experience, mm -hmm. even when it's not true. Exactly. You know? Yeah, that's very true. And I think that new writers, especially... um young writers can be especially vulnerable to this. Mm -hmm. So if you're a student in school and you're just starting to write some books or write some short stories and now suddenly a bunch of people are criticizing you or, or like um, making bullying comments that are causing you to be discouraged about your writing, that can be a difficult situation for a brand new writer, someone who's just starting out. So I think, yeah, first things first, realize that they're coming at this with their own experience. They're looking through a, a tinted lens and it shouldn't reflect, it, it, shouldn't, um, it shouldn't impact how you view your own work. Yeah, especially since most people, if they have something negative to say and they're not like giving you feedback in a constructive format, they're not actually trying to help you. Right. They are just being negative. Um, right. Most people who say something in a negative, uh, f in, uh, through a negative perspective, um, they are unhappy people. They are deeply unhappy. Mm -hmm. And they, you just need to look at it from that, like from what it really is. Like they're unhappy. Right. Don't let them make you unhappy with mm -hmm. their negative comments. Right. And by negative comments, we, I think, don't mean like, Oh, you know, I I didn't really like this aspect of your book, but I yeah, think no, it that's, could be that's made better critique. by this. Not constructive that's helpful criticism. Critiquing, yeah. Right. But like <laughs> you think you're a writer, but your yeah. stuff is garbage. Right. Like comments like that are people who, you know, are up on Twitter yeah. ripping your book apart or ripping you apart or making fun of you or whatever they're doing. Right. That's not that's not constructive criticism. That's not like, oh, you know, helpful. It's not it's not being done. It's not being that's advice that's not being given in the spirit of giving advice. That's just we want to rip and tear um and say negative things. And so if someone's doing that to your work in progress, you need to not listen to them. You need to shut out those voices and then take an affirmative action in the opposite direction. Because I think it's important to not just stop at like, oh, tune those voices out. Well, how? How do we tune those voices out when you have a negative person or persons telling you, hey, you'll never be good enough. Hey, your story isn't good enough, whatever. Then come back at it with positivity. Fill yourself with positive affirmations about your craft, about your own work, whether it's people you know, writing communities that you get involved with, or whether it's listening to motivational speeches on YouTube from people you may never meet. Um, make that your, make those people your friends, even if it's a one-sided friendship, like you're listening to some kind of mentor online. Um, surround yourself with positive words, with positive affirmations about your work, because what you are putting in now is what you will produce and bring into your life and into your work in the future. So if you want to be a successful author, you need to be surrounding yourself with ideas and your dreams and positive words, positive people who are backing you up and cheering you on and telling you that you can do that. Because the reality is you can do anything you set your mind to. Shameless you, plug. Let me interrupt yeah. just to say shameless plug. I have a really nice writing meditation, meditation for oh, writers. Oh yeah, I love your writing meditation. We'll, we'll link it in the corner and in the in the show notes as well, um, which includes a bunch of positive affirmations for writing, which I have, have had a lot of writers on my channel say that they really like it. And I really like it. I, I love it time. too. It's yeah. great. Yeah. We can link that below. Um, so listen to that. Start with that one. 
and then work your way through some other ones. If you look up like, you know, different motivational videos, you'll, there's some great channels on YouTube that are just dedicated to compilations of motivational speeches and all this great stuff. And I get really pumped up on those. And what it's really doing is it's affirming what you're doing. Cause motivation isn't just getting all like, ah, I'm excited. Right. A lot you of people wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to get excited if it wasn't like something at your core too. Exactly. You know, like that's what I've always felt about motivation. Like people who say motivation is garbage and you know, it fades, it goes away. Well, really the problem is not the motivation itself, but the right. fact that you don't stay in that place of really being connected to your passion and your mission. Right. That's a perfect word for it. Your mission. Yeah. Like I heard a motivational speaker recently say that motivation isn't um, just getting all ramped up right. and excited and like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this. It's reminding yourself the reason why. Mm. Why does it matter? Why does it matter? <laughs> <laughs> That's That literally will drive you through. It'll drive you through a work in progress. It will also drive you through life. Life. And I was just going to say as a side note to the criticism thing earlier, it is important to mention that there will be a select few people, underscored few <laughs> who you trust to give you honest feedback on your work and not all of it will be positive, okay? So some of it will be critiques, but you can tell because of who this person is and the fact that they believe in you and they want to see you succeed, that's the most important qualifier there. They want to see you succeed. If you know they want to see you succeed, then you can take their even their negative feedback as helpful, because it might not all be positive. Some of it may be you should change this or you should delete that or I think this part is lacking or this part needs help. That's trying to help you to be a better writer. Right. So I think making those distinctions is, is really helpful because um, you certainly don't want to block out all critiques or else you'll never grow and improve. Absolutely not. Uh, you want to take critiques from the people that you trust and the people who want to see you succeed. Um, and those are going to be a few people. Okay, just a few people. Um, but and I think you'll also notice by how they give you mm, what yeah. they're actually saying. So someone who says, hey, you know, I think this component was a little off and it fell off because of X, Y, Z. And I think you can improve it by, you know, A, B, C. Right. Now, versus someone who's just like, this whole book is dumb and a waste right. of my time. Now also, that's that's <laughs> yeah. that 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 shows you right there. By the way, the people said it. Who is like trying to to maybe point out a negative, but give you a positive that you could that could help make it better versus someone who's just like, oh, this whole thing's garbage. Yeah, and honestly, we should do like a whole podcast about like a feedback from like ARC readers and like critique partners and stuff. Right. Because I think that's worth talking about like in a whole episode by itself. Um, but another aspect is publicly saying something and then privately saying something. Right. So like usually your ARC readers will be the people who, you know, they offer advanced reviews, obviously, but they also can send you private messages depending on what platform you're using. Um, but you should always give them the opportunity to send you private messages and you should read all of the private messages. And I did that with my book. I continue to do that with the books that I publish in the future. Um, because that's valuable feedback. Before you publish the book, you still have time to make changes. You still have time to think about what you are putting out into the world. And so those private messages are really most of the time going to be constructive, helpful criticism, um, critiques, because they are private, okay? <laughs> People aren't going on Twitter or even Goodreads um, to like rip your book apart or to be like, I thought this was that. like, that's not going to be helping the author. So you can like tell right off the bat, I think what, when most people are like trying to be helpful and when they're just like mm -hmm. trying to be uh, sort of, I don't know, just, just enjoying talking about something right? <laughs> and criticizing something, you know? Yeah. And I think too, if you notice also, uh, I think this is important for students and young people. Um, if you notice that a lot of this is coming from friend group slash peer pressure, friend groups, I'm going to put in quotes, friend groups, analyze who these people are, who your quote unquote friends are. Because if you're in a situation where you're getting a lot of peer pressure and bullying or people saying negative things to you all the time, whether it's about your creativity or your career that you're trying to embark on, 
who you are spending time with is going to impact you emotionally, spiritually, mentally. Guide yourself into positive relationships and let go of toxic ones because that's what's going to help you stay healthy as an individual in all those areas of your life. It's going to help you. It will determine in so many so many cases what will like make or break your career, your your goals, your dreams. All those things are shaped by what information input you have is what I like to call it, information input. Anything that's going into your eyes, <laughs> into your ears, whether it's someone talking to you, standing in front of you, talking to you, telling you, oh, you'll never be that. Oh, you'll never do that. You're not good enough. You, you, you won't make it. Or if it's if it's it's a book telling you that or a movie telling you that. It's it's all being processed into your brain. And on a subconscious level, your subconscious will eventually start believing, you know what, maybe we can't do this. Maybe we can't do this. You don't ever want it to get to that level. You want to be feeding your subconscious mind through the friendships you have, the relationships you have, the books you read, the films you watch. You want all of those things to be affirming to you what you want in life. You have to put those things in now to have those results and enjoy those results in the future. So sit down and be quiet with yourself and figure out like, what do I really want out of this life? Do I want to have a successful uh, author career? Is that what I picture for myself? Do I picture myself being able to publish amazing books that impact people's lives in positive ways? And if the answer is yes, then you need to align yourself with that truth, that inner truth in your heart and align yourself with relationships that push you toward your goals, mentors that push you toward your goals, books and films and documentaries and podcasts that push you toward your goals. Align yourself with that inner truth. Yeah, 100%. That's so, so helpful. So Such good advice. Um, and like what you said about, you know, your friends that you're not sure if they're really true friends. Like, the, the, I think the good qualifier to determine if they are or not is to ask yourself, are they, do you ever doubt that they're really happy for you when you succeed? And if you do doubt that, then chances are they still have some growing up to do. They still have some learning to go through in their life. And they might, they might not be as good of friends as you thought. Right. Now, there will be people who undoubtedly are happy for you and you can tell and they want to see you succeed and it makes them just as happy to see you succeed as it makes you to see you succeed and those people are keepers you should hang on to them yes. for sure with everything that you've got um but like we said earlier and like i've said in the past on this podcast you can decide who your friends are mm -hmm. and there's some great famous quote that goes something like you are a combination of the five people you spend the most time with which is so true. But those people don't have to just be the people you happen to be around all the time. They don't have to be, you know, who, who you live with, your family or your friends or the people you see every day at work or at school. They can be people that you choose to hang out with. Hang out in air quotes because right. hanging out could be reading their books, listening to their podcasts, listening to their videos, listening to everything that they have to say. And becoming their friend more or less because you can eventually get to know them so well that you can finish their sentences mm -hmm. and that's really kind of what constitutes a friend I mean a best friend I mean I can finish Katie's sentences and she can finish mine. oh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're very in sync <laughs> yeah so you want to be in sync with somebody who you admire or who you look up to or you are just like I love their confidence I love their spirit I love their attitude I love what they're doing in life they're doing they're going after the things I want to go after and they're living the dream that I have for my life, then synchronize yourself with that person. Sync up with the way that they think and the way that they live their life. Are they going around feeling incompetent and insecure about themselves? Probably not. You probably right. admire their confidence because confidence is one of the most attractive things about a person. So if you admire somebody's confidence and you just absorb yourself in everything that they have written and and put out there and and spoken, you're you're going some of that confidence is going to run off, rub off on you for sure. Mm -hmm. Like it can't not, right? You know? Yeah, absolutely. That's 100% true and 
what those relationships really are, are mentorship relationships where you're, you're feeding off of that person's positivity. And positivity, we're not just talking about, you know, fluffy words of like, oh, you can do it, you can do it. We're talking about deep-seated truths about the fact that you have so much potential inside of you to accomplish and to manifest. And feed on that truth. Find people who are going to help you access your potential, the potential that's already inside you. It's not coming from... Uh, you know, a guru online. It's not coming from a course. It's already in you. You just need to be listening to words of affirmation, positive people who are speaking truth and helping you access that potential that you already have to be who you are destined to be. And that goes for careers. That goes for uh, writing, being an author, That's part of something. If you feel on fire for writing and you're like, man, you know, I've always wanted to do this. This is what I want to do. Then don't let anyone discourage you from that. And when you hear words of negativity or people saying bullying things or rude things or mean things or tearing apart your writing or putting you down, the best way to have quote unquote revenge, which I say that This is actually a quote from someone else, so I'm not talking about actually getting revenge on someone. It's the opposite. The best way to have revenge, quote unquote, is to succeed, to just continue with what you're doing. Don't get hung up on needing to debate that person or needing to tell them why you are good enough or needing to get in those arguments. Don't even engage with it. Don't get revenge on it. Get revenge by being you to the best of your ability and accessing accessing your own potential to the best of your ability, being the most you can be, going the farthest you can go, and proving them all wrong when you succeed. Not only are you proving them wrong, you are showing others who are not saying anything, who are the, a lot of, there's a lot of people who are silent about their dreams, that you are, by seeing you succeed, you're giving them permission to speak out about their own dreams and to go for it. Yeah, 100%. And also you, the thing is you let them win if you let yourself be discouraged. Exactly. So that's really like the fight is that you're, you're fighting for yourself and for your dream. And you're taking the stance of the victor, the hero of your story rather than the victim. Yes. Okay, so you don't have to be the victim of their discouragement. You don't have to be discouraged by them. I like to say, um, I I think I kind of coined this, but I probably took it from somewhere else. I can't remember. (laughs) Um, In order for you to to discourage me, I would have to believe that you understood the limit to which I'm willing to work for my dream. Mm, That's cool. Nice try, though. Ah, that's awesome. <laughs> Literally, that's like, that's awesome. what I, I, I say that to myself. I have that written down somewhere on my computer. Like, that is so important to remember. And even if you have a little bit of a, a brash attitude about it, can't hurt. You can't know, hurt. You know you're awesome. It'd be better to be overconfident than insecure because yeah. there's so many people out there who I always like to think about, like the greats, the masters who went down in history and did amazing things, and especially artists I'm talking of specifically, but also inventors and people who just changed the world with their amazing ideas. If somebody had discouraged them early on and told them, hey, you can't do that. If somebody told Mozart when he was five years old, you can't play piano, like you suck. Stop. (laughs) Stop making noise. Stop banging on the piano. You're annoying everybody. And he's like, okay, I'll just, you know, do something else instead with my life. What a travesty. If somebody told Michelangelo, you can't paint. Like, (laughs) you just, everybody else is better than you. You can't paint. Just go back to making statues. I mean, he was great at making statues as well. But (laughs) yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) But then you want to have the Sistine Chapel and you want to have these amazing things. He's multi talented. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So it's like if you just imagine anybody, anybody, anybody who went down in history as doing these amazing things, if they had been discouraged, and a lot of people had to fight back discouragement, a lot of those people had to push back discouragement. And had to ignore it and pass by it, all the negativity, and believe in themselves instead and continue to fight for their dream. And that's why their names are in the Hall of Fame, Mm -hmm. (laughs) so to speak. Yeah. 
you know, because they believed in themselves. Exactly. So don't don't let the discouragement get to you or else they win and you don't get anything. Like that's that's so discouraging to even think about. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Be the victor. Be the hero. Be the victor. Be the heroine or because the hero. Because you already story. are. Yeah. And th- that's the thing. You're you're not lying to yourself. You're not trying to make yourself believe in a fantasy yeah. of you can be successful, but we all know that's really not true. No, it, it really is true. Yeah. It, it really is true. Um, attract those things into your life by saying yes. Saying yes. Saying the universe is behind me. I am behind me. I am doing everything I can. I am chasing my dream. I am chasing my goal because it is possible. Not because it's impossible. Because it is possible. And you have all the potential. You have all the ability. Everything you need is already inside of you. And you've 100% got this. And be a winner. Don't don't let the negative voices win. Whether they're external voices, actual people saying it to you, or whether they're the voices in your head like, oh, I'm doubting myself all the time. A lot of people deal with that too. And that can be just as dangerous of an enemy yeah. to have to deal with, you know, um, enemy in the sense of it's, it's something that's bringing you down. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And um, one of my favorite quotes is, um, you should look up the whole quote because I, I won't be able to remember the whole thing. But is there's there's several that are great about the confidence but the one i'm thinking of specifically is i think it's called the fighter and this is something that i remind myself of so much when i'm thinking about what i'm doing and anybody who has something negative to say just for the sake of saying something negative who isn't doing what i'm doing okay so you're gonna have a lot of people who criticize your writing or your creative endeavors who aren't writing they aren't writers and they aren't endeavoring in for anything creatively <laughs> They're not in the fighting ring, okay? You are. Right. So they are the the people who are standing by watching and thinking that they can critique what you're, you know, criticize you. So I can't remember the, the exact wording of the quote, but I love the ending so much that says that, you know, even if you uh, struggle and you, even if you fail at what you're doing, at least you fail while daring greatly and you'll never be among those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. Hmm. And the whole quote, like, chills yeah, every you, time. Have to, you have to look up the whole quote because uh, I can't remember it all off the top of my head. It's, it's really yeah. long, but it's so good because that is really the essence of what's going on here. You're in the fighting ring. They're not. Why would you listen to them? Right. You know, yeah. Mic drop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. Like, there's nothing <laughs> more to say. That's it. So keep keep your eyes on your own fight, not on the spectators. And exactly. And nobody will ever be in the same fight that you are because you're yeah. you're an individual. Exactly. Doing your own thing, living your own life. Nobody can understand you, uh, your path and your experience except you. Mm-hmm. Like you know, because nobody else has the same experience in life. Yeah. <laughs> in perspective. So right. Just fight your own fight and. Don't listen to the crowd. Yeah, and hey, you know, if you're if you're a writer and you're looking for like, hey, I don't really have anyone around me to to help encourage me, comment below because we've seen so many amazing writers, aspiring writers down in the comments that it's like this fun little community where people are, I see people all the time encouraging each other. Hop over to Abby's channel, youtube.com slash Abby Emmons. Her writing, I almost did again, Writing Life Wednesdays. <laughs> Writers Life Writers Wednesday. Life Wednesdays. <laughs> right. I've right. also recently been Writers posting highlights of this show. So yeah. some really cool, fun new videos yeah. coming to the channel. So Abby, there's like an immense on both of our channels, but a- Abby's channel recently has just been like <laughs> Blasting off like a rocket, and there's so many amazing writers there. Go get involved in the writing community there. It's amazing. Abby also has an amazing Patreon group full of writers inspiring each other, and we have one too. So if you want to join the Patreon group, um, it is patreon.com slash the Kate and Abby show. Feel free to always reach out to us, comment below, and let us know what you think. We hope you guys got a lot of value out of this, and remember, we believe in you. You've got this. You have the potential inside of you. We believe in you. And we'll see you in the next episode. Stay stoked. And rock on.